always serving a fresh cup of daily inspiration, Deanna Hobbs. Today's inspiration is to remind you to push. You're about to give birth to destiny. Welcome to your daily cup of inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs. I'm founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where my team and I fuel your faith every day. I am just excited all down in my soul, excited in my spirit to have you here. There's a great word from the Lord for us today. So thank you for joining me Monday through Friday. I share these encouragements as a free resource for you. I love how you're downloading them from iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. You're streaming them on DeannaHobbs.com and even going over to YouTube and subscribing under Deanna Hobbs and you're receiving notifications every time a podcast is uploaded there. Isn't it just awesome that God pours into us this way. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. God, our Father, I thank you so much. You are good to us. You are mindful of us, and we are so blessed by your presence. I pray that you speak to the person listening right now. Please give them a word tailor-made to their situation and minister to them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is our oldest son, Kadar's 13th birthday. He woke up with a big smile on his face, excited about his big day. I held him tightly and said, I cannot believe you're a teenager. I mean, where has the time gone? As we were talking about him getting older and such, our youngest son, Caleb, who's 10, chimed in, when was I born? Now, when he asked me that question, I thought it was sort of strange because he knows his actual birth date very well. But I figured he'd forgotten for some reason and proceeded to tell him. Well, before I could finish telling him that he was born in 2006, he interrupted and said, no, not that birthday. I mean, when was I born? Like, was daddy there? What time was it? Oh, I said, realizing he wanted specific details about his birth. And so I recounted the story to him and I've mentioned it before. But anyway, just in case you're not familiar with the dramatic events surrounding Caleb's birth, I'll recap. I was unprepared to deliver on the day Caleb came into this world, but I got into this terrible accident that caused a placental abruption where my placenta separated from my uterus. My contraction started coming one right after the other and it forced me into premature labor. At the time, I lived in Delaware, but my collision happened in Philadelphia. I was eight months pregnant with Caleb. I accidentally drove through a red light into oncoming traffic, so it was my fault, and I got hit really hard on the driver's side of my vehicle at this busy intersection and ended up spinning in the middle of the road, and I thought I was going to lose all three of the Hobbs children and the one in my belly that day. It was one of the most terrifying experiences experiences of my life. And you know what happened to the vehicle? It ended up perfectly parked next to a curb. Isn't that crazy? Completely out of the flow of traffic where our family could have been killed. The vehicle was totaled. I did major damage to my sciatic nerve in my lower back. And I was in full on labor almost immediately. So I was telling Caleb with all these crazy events that unfolded, daddy wasn't there for the delivery. And it was the first birth that Kenya wasn't present for. He had our three children with him and no one was able to watch them because we had no available family other than Kenya in Delaware. And so he couldn't be with me since I was stuck in Philly. I didn't have my regular doctor. I had a team of doctors I didn't know at a hospital I'd never been to all by myself and an excruciating pain from the accident. Now, add the pain of labor to the pain of my accident injuries, and oh boy, when time came to push Caleb out, I was crying and terrified. I remember calling Kenya on my cell phone, right, in the middle of labor and delivery. I told him, I can't, I can't push, I can't do it. I was hysterical. It was an ordeal, but thank God for his grace. Though Caleb was premature, as I said, and I thought I couldn't do it, I got through it. I was telling Caleb today, Daddy said, you can do it. Push, push. Whew, that was something else. I was thinking about the fact that when I was in labor that day, I had come to the point where it was time to hold Caleb. I had been carrying him in my womb for eight months, but it was up to me to push him out. I had to dig deep. 
pray and believe that I could do it. And you know what? I want you to know about that experience that was deeply unpleasant, by the way. Giving birth turned out not to be as difficult or painful as I imagined it would be. Don't get me wrong now. It hurt. But Caleb came out in a few pushes. I was just afraid to push, afraid of the pain, afraid of giving birth alone without Kenya, my husband, my partner by my side. But the fear turned out to be worse than the reality. Giving birth meant I had to push through fear. And you're no different from me. You may not be about to give birth to a physical baby or you might. And if so, congratulations. But whoever you are, you do have a destiny that you have to give birth to. And let me tell you, you are going to come face to face with fear. You're going to feel like giving up. You're going to feel like quitting and saying, I can't do this. It will get hard sometimes, painful sometimes, but you got to push because there's an amazing blessing on the other side of that struggle. A little earlier, I was thinking about Joshua 1 and 2, where the Lord very simply and matter-of-factly told Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses had been his mentor, and he was gone. And so God told Joshua, now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. Then in verse 3, God said to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. I think that's an incredible promise, right? I mean, wow, wherever their foot stepped, that land belonged to them. Yep. Now, while that was exciting, that also meant they had to take steps. They were about to walk into something as long as they were willing to act on something, which was God's word. Israel had to cross the Jordan River before entering that promised land. In verse 15 of that chapter, we see that it wasn't until the feet of the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant, which always symbolizes the manifest presence of God, touched the water. Their feet had to touch the water. And then the miracle occurred. The Bible says that water stood up in a heap, just like it did with the Red Sea. And all of Israel was able to cross on dry land. It was a miracle. But what if the priests were too afraid to get their feet wet? And what if they were too scared to push forward because of doubts and uncertainty about what would happen? They would have never seen a move of God like that. Listen to me. You can't be afraid to get your feet wet. In other words, Don't be too scared to trust God and to push forward and to take steps toward giving birth to your promise. What do you have to push through today? Really think about it. There are some things coming against you. I know everything is not easy peasy. You've got problems. You've got troubles. We all do. But isn't your destiny worth you not quitting? You might feel like me and you're saying, Deanna, I can't do it. I can't push. It hurts too much. It's too hard. Well, God sent you to this podcast. So Deanna Hobbs. Your labor and delivery coach could tell you, yes, you can do it. God has given you the strength. I know it's a battle, but push, fight. Your destiny is waiting for you. And you have the favor of God on your side. He knows you can't do it all by yourself, but you do have to cooperate with him. You do have to participate. You do have to move forward. You do have to place your full confidence in the Lord and his faithfulness to fulfill his word. You do have to resist the enemy and his attempts to intimidate you, to make you shrink away from your predestined purpose. What God has for you is incredible. Don't miss out. Start taking steps. When it gets hard, keep pushing. You might have to cry sometimes, but keep on pushing. You're about to give birth to something truly great. To help you continue pushing, I'm stirring these powerful words God spoke in Joshua 1 and 9 in the New International Version right into your cup of inspiration. And it says this, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go go. As you drink down the contents of your cup, use this word as an antidote for fear. Believe that you are about to possess the promise because you are. As long as you push through, you are well able. There's an inheritance waiting for you. Go forth in his name. Now let's pray together. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. I just believe they're about to step into something great and give birth to the promises you have given them. At the same time, I know the enemy is coming after 
after them and working hard to introduce doubt and fear and discouragement. But I rebuke any defeated thoughts and I pray that you will help them to place their full confidence in you. For I know you'll take them to the place you have preordained for them as long as they push forward in faith. We give you glory for the destiny that awaits them all for the honor of your name. In Jesus name. Amen. Your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we help fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to www.deannahobbs.com.